It was the 1970s in the midst of the Cold War. Tensions between the US and the Soviet Union created the possibility of nuclear disaster. In these dark times, a friendship between two world-class ping pong players would give Mao Zedong and the newly elected president Richard Nixon a foreign policy opportunity that would shape not only their future, but the future of Sino-American relations. Ping pong diplomacy was a major diplomatic event because it reopened relations between the United States and China, gave the United States an edge in the Cold War negotiations, and ended China's isolationism. Both Chao and Mao frequently practiced sports diplomacy. Mao ordered the media coverage of ping pong matches to pay more attention to politics than the game. Chao ordered CCTV to cover the Romanian star player more than the Chinese during their match on December. As soon as he reached the White House, Nixon made better relations with China's top reward. Nixon did this for reasons. He promised voters to bring the U.S. out of Vietnam with honor, and better relations with China seemed to be the easiest way to accomplish this. Nixon also needed to improve the United States' relationship with the USSR, and he believed that a stronger relationship with China would help strengthen the bargaining position. Nixon tried to reach China in every possible way. In 1969, he spoke to many world leaders about the People's Republic of China on the first presidential world tour, and at the 21st anniversary convening of the UN in New York in 1970, he met with Pakistani President Yahya Khan on October 25th, since Pakistan had good relations with both the United States and China. During the meeting, Nixon told Khan, it is essential that we open negotiations with China, and indicated he was prepared to offer a high-level contact. Nixon asked him to deliver the message directly to the Chinese leaders, since he was about to visit Beijing and Agree. Nixon also approached the Romanian president Nicolae Ceausescu on October 26th in the same way. Ceausescu promised he would speak to the Chinese about the matter and pass on any Chinese responses. On September 9, 1969, Nixon asked the U.S. ambassador in Warsaw to contact Chinese diplomats and indicate that he wanted to begin discussion. As a result, talk between Ambassador Walter Stossel and the Chinese Charge Day Affairs Lei Yang began January 20, 1970. Stossel expressed the United States' desire to improve relations with China and offered a higher level contact. Yang promised nothing. As a sign of goodwill, the State Department informed the embassies on January 18 that restrictions on passports to travel to the PRC would expire on March 15. This goodwill gesture made it possible for the American ping pong team to accept the Chinese invitation to visit China in April 1971. Mao also had reasons to seek a better relationship with the United States. The Cultural Revolution had eroded all the political foundations Mao himself had planted. China was collapsing economically from self-induced diplomatic isolation, and the Soviet-Chinese relationship had become so tense that military clashes occurred on their common border in 1969. Mao had a good reason to be worried. The USSR had brutally suppressed the Czech Revolution under the Brezhnev Doctrine, which gave Russia the right to use military force against any country that challenged Soviet authority. Mao began to consider better Sino-American relations, mostly because of the Soviet threat. He also hoped Nixon would be a person he could deal with, a hope strengthened but because of the feelers Nixon had sent out. Better relations with the US offered Mao two main advantages, some security from the Soviet threat and the possibility of gaining control of Taiwan. Like Nixon, Mao also began to send signals about better diplomatic relations to the US approved commentators articles on Nixon's inauguration speech and the speech itself in the People's Daily and the Red Flag, CCP propaganda newspapers. When Kissinger was trying to find the best way to reach China in 1969, Mao ordered four of his marshals to do the same. So Mao met with his old friend Edgar Snow, an American journalist, to send messages to the United States. Mao told Snow that he would welcome Nixon to come to China. A photo of Mao and Snow at Tiananmen was published in the People's Daily with the words, People of the world, including the American people, are our friends, as a positive signal. Mao's idea of using ping pong for diplomatic reasons was hampered by his own domestic policy. The Cultural Revolution did large amounts of damage to Chinese athletics, including ping pong. Several top ping pong players committed suicide after being humiliated and tortured by Red. However, the PRC still had its membership in the World Table Tennis Federation. Even though they missed the 29th 30th World Table Tennis Championship, Chao and Lai thought the Chinese table tennis team should make an appearance at the 31st Championships in Nagoya, Japan from March 28th to April 7th, 1970, as part of the nation's return to the global community, and began making plans as early as October 1970. It was officially announced in the People's Daily that China would be participating in the championship on February 2nd, 1971. Chao and Lai continued to have a personal involvement with the team. He watched the team practice on February 12th and encouraged the players to do well at the competition. Chao regarded the competition as a political battle and emphasized the philosophy of friendship first, competition second. He met with the team on March 8th and emphasized the political aspects of the tournament. Acknowledging the diplomatic and political nature of the game, Chao said, As a group, we sooner or later will have contact with them. If the American team makes progress or improves, we can consider inviting them here for competition. We should have sports competitions with the American Chao was in secret communication with the White House at this time. There were lots of obstacles for China to overcome to participate in the game. The Norodom Sihana government in Cambodia had been overthrown in March of 1970 and ended up taking refuge in China. When the refugees learned that the Lan Na government was playing in the games, they asked the Chinese not to participate. 
Backing out would not impress the Japanese and ruin the Chinese diplomacy strategy, but staying in might present political troubles for Zhao, who had been criticized for his pragmatic foreign policy. When North Korea also expressed reservation about China's participation, Chao asked the team if they could participate. Most of the team was against competing. Disappointed, Chao decided to play it safe by referring the decision to Mao, who alone could do anything he wanted. On March 15, 1971, Mao said the team should go. On March 16th, Chao hosted a send-off party for the Chinese team, reminding them friendship first, competition second. Players were also instructed not to talk to the Americans or greet them, and they were only allowed to shake hands after a match. In addition, the Chinese star player Chang Zedong was not allowed to play the player from Cambodia, but the Chinese support. The Chinese had their own separate bus and hotel, so the Americans had to start communication with them. Chun Miles, a journalist from Sports Illustrated, a letter to the Chinese asking if he could interview Ching Zedong, March 28th, and real American journalist shook hands with Song Chong, the official from the Chinese team, expressed a desire to visit China. Also, American team heads Graham Steenhoven and Rufford Harrison asked if China was willing to let an American team visit. On April 4th, American player Glenn Cohen jumped on the Chinese team's bus. At first, no one said anything to him. But then, the world champion and Chinese player Chang Zedong remembered that Mao had told Snow that China was hoping for better relations with the U.S. He told Kohan through an interpreter that the Chinese and Americans were friends and gave him a small silk painting as a symbol of friendship. Kohan was overjoyed and gave Chang a t-shirt and told him he would like to visit China someday. Kissinger thought the Chinese had pre-planned a gesture of friendship. During the competition, Chao Wen Mai was informed that the teams from Colombia, Jamaica, and the United States expressed an interest in visiting China. Invitations would be offered to the Jamaican and Colombian teams to enhance the political influence and lay down the foundation for the Chinese sports team to visit Latin America. However, it was recommended not to invite the American team because leftist Americans and influential politicians had not yet done so. They might ask for the American players' addresses for future communication. Even though the American team had shown gestures of friendship, on April 6, after three days of thinking, Mao hesitantly approved this course of action. However, around midnight of the same day, Mao appeared deep in thought, took his sleeping pills, and mumbled to his assistant to call the foreign ministry to issue an invitation to the American team. Wu had to act quickly, but Mao had told her to ignore everything he said after he had taken his sleeping pills. Unsure, Wu decided not to do anything and see how Mao reacted. Later, he asked her why she had not carried out his instructions. Wu asked Mao what he had told her to do, and he responded to invite the American team. Wu hurriedly called the foreign ministry, since it was April 7th, the last day of the competition, and told them to issue the Americans an invitation. When Song received his instructions from Beijing, he acted quickly. He went to the hotel where the Americans were staying, found Harrison, and asked how the Americans would react to an invitation for the team and officials to go to China. The Americans jumped at the chance, but their only concern was that they would not have enough money for the return flight home. Song, Song said the Chinese would pay for the cost. On April 7th at 7.30, the Americans officially accepted China's invitation to visit. The 15 members of the American ping pong team arrived in China on April 10th and left on April 17th. They were the first American group to come to China since 1949. The team visited Beijing, Shanghai, and Hangzhou. Xiao, leaving nothing to chance during this major diplomatic encounter, planned most of the American visit. He even orchestrated what entertainment the Americans watched and tried to organize the soon-traveling Chinese ballet to set up a special performance of the Red Detachment of Women. The ping pong matches between the Chinese and the Americans were engineered by Chao also. He printed on the American schedule that the Chinese audience was to applaud the American players, set the text of the commentator would read, and instructed that the Chinese and American players were to shake and hold hands while walking to the table, all in the spirit of friendship first. He also instructed the Chinese players to let the Americans win some games. In a meeting on April 14, 1971 between Chao and Mai and the Americans, he told the Americans what it was to be friends from afar. As with their visit, the door to friendship had been reopened. The Soviets became very alarmed at the Chinese ping-pong initiative, warning Washington that it was a trick and they were afraid of the Americans getting dragged in. Nixon and Kissinger were surprised with the news, but very pleased as well. Nixon realized the full meaning of Mao's ping-pong initiative, since he had been the, a recipient of the secret communication with Peking, therefore confirming their desire to work for better relations. Kissinger and Nixon agreed that our whole policy and the current rules on China will help shake the Soviets up as will Brezhnev's need to make a big peace move of some kind, which should play in our favor for a SALT agreement and a summit conference. Nixon thought China had given them maneuvering room with Russia, and now we are not against the wall. Nixon was impressed with these positive developments and wanted to keep the momentum going. Met with many of those of the American ping pong team in Steenhoven at their house on April 21, 1971, to Kissinger to explore other diplomatic initiatives, as well as making several significant changes in U.S. policy towards China on April 14th removing the 20-year-old oil embargo and preparing to offer visas for visitors from China. 
lacked the relaxed currency controls to permit the use of dollars by Beijing, and was considering additional steps to be taken. And what the Chinese also began to move more quickly after these developments. Chao and Lai sent a message via Pakistan to the U.S. confirming Beijing's willingness to host a special envoy of the president of the U.S or even the president himself, for a direct meeting and discussion. Nixon responded with three important messages to Xiao. He was encouraged by Chao's positive and constructive message. He was personally handling negotiations with China, and he was prepared to accept an invitation to Beijing, and Kissinger would go first to arrange the trip. Nixon also promised Washington would conclude no agreement with the USSR that would be directly against the PRC on May 20th. Zhu responded that Mao welcomed his visit, and he warmly looked forward to meeting with Kissinger. Kissinger visited Beijing on July 9th as planned. He was there. Zhao addressed the effects of King Kong diplomacy. See that they invited the U.S. table tennis delegation to China. And they can bear witness that the Chinese people welcomed this visit of the American people. They have also received many repeated invitations from the U.S. Table Tennis Association and the delegation to the U.S. They feel that the American people want to welcome the Chinese people. When Nixon visited on February 21st, 1972. I explained that he saw Nixon was right and they played ping pong. Both sides lost certain things in ping pong diplomacy. Mao lost some of his revolutionary purity, and the U.S. lost major concessions to Taiwan and handed over international credibility and legitimacy. Mao realized this, and Taiwan replaced as China's sole representative in the U.N. Overall, the visit sparked lots of interest among the United States population in China, and also kicked off a healthy relationship and cultural exchange between the two countries.